here we have number three. So it tells you that you have a ramp. This ramp is at a 20 degree angle. I'll call this theta. And it tells you that you have two boxes that are sliding down. Well, these boxes are kind of connected. B is pushing down A, and you know they're ba they're touching each other. So I'm just going to treat this as one big box, and I'll just call this mass of A plus mass of B. I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to say that M is equal to M A plus M B, just to simplify down my equations as I'm going along. So I'm going to go ahead and draw out all of my forces. I have gravity, which points straight down. I'll call this M G. Then I have a force that is in the y component, and I have a force that's in the x component. And the x one, because this angle is theta, this is going to be mg sine of theta. And then the component in the y is going to be mg cosine of theta. I'm just going to draw out my axes and say that parallel to the ramp is my x axis. And then perpendicular to the ramp, going to get straight up, is going to be my y axis. So, determine the rest of the forces. There's a normal force, it's going to be straight up, um, and straight up into the y. So, you'll have um, Fn, and then you have your mg cosine. You also have friction, which will always oppose the direction that the box is moving. And the box is sliding down, so you're going to have friction. It points up, so that'll be force of friction. So I'm just going to say what is positive and what is negative. And generally what you want to do is say where the box is accelerating is going to be positive. Well, I know the box is accelerating in the x, so I'm going to say the x is positive. I'm also going to say down is positive because um, it'll be easier to deal with these, uh, it'll be easier to deal with this uh, gravity component. And I'll just say that up is negative and the left is negative. So now I have my whole free body diagram drawn out. I can go over here and say, say go over here and write out my components of all my forces. So in the x, I have the force of friction, which is going to be negative because it's pointing to the right. And then I have mg sine of theta, which is going to be positive because it's pointing to the left. And those are my forces in the x. And in the y, I have the normal force, which is going to be negative because it's pointing up. And then I'm going to have uh, mg cosine of theta, positive because it's pointing down. And those are my, those are all my forces. So I'm going to go in the x and say that mg sine of theta uh, minus force of friction is equal to ma. Now at this point, you got to be wondering, like, you know. It's asking us to, uh, you know, find how long it takes for the package to reach the bottom. It wants to find time. So, like, why am I finding acceleration? Well, the idea is I want to be able to use a kinematic equation to solve for time when I have acceleration and I have this distance. And I'll also have that the initial velocity is zero because it says, it, you know, it starts sliding down. So, you have to, you know, make an assumption that it starts from rest. So, the big key in this equation is just finding this acceleration to solve the kinematic equation to find time. It's a pretty uh, you know, complicated and complicated problem. So I'm going to go over here and I'm going to say that the force of friction is equal to mu, in this case it will be mu kinetic, fn. So it'll be mg sine of theta minus mu kinetic fn is equal to ma. And this acceleration is the thing I'm solving for. Well, I need to find the normal force. I can write it here. So I'll say that mg cosine theta minus fn. And I'll say it's equal to zero because this is in the y and it's not accelerating the y um, because it's not either going into the ground or flying off the ramp. So acceleration y is going to be zero. So the normal force will be equal to mg cosine of theta. So I can plug that in there. I'll get mg sine of theta minus mu kinetic, and it'll be that whole long thing for a normal force, it'll be mg cosine of theta, it's going to be equal to ma. Now if you notice here, all of these terms have mass, so they actually can divide and cancel out, uh, which is why I decided not to, you know, draw ma plus mb for all of them, because it ends up canceling out and making 
and all this much simpler. So I'm going to go ahead and drag this all the way up here, just so I have plenty of room. And I'll get g sine theta minus mu kinetic um, g cosine of theta is equal to the acceleration. Awesome. So now I've defined a kinematic equation that lets me solve for time given the acceleration, the distance that it pulls down, the distance that it slides on the ramp, and also that the initial velocity is zero because we made the assumption that it starts sliding down from rest. So we have the initial, we have acceleration, and we have dis displacement, and we define time. So the equation that works for this is delta x is equal to v1t plus uh, 1 half a t squared. And so for this v1, we set a 0, so we cross it out. Then we'll get delta x is equal to 1 half a t squared. And we're solving for t, so I'm just going to get t by its, uh, on its own side. So multiply it by 2, we'll get delta x is equal to, it would be 2 delta x, sorry. 2 delta x is equal to a t squared divided by a, divided by a, and we'll give it t squared is equal to 2 delta x over a. So that'll be equal to the square root of 2 delta x over a. And then now you plug this whole big uh, a term, that the entire thing. Uh, you have to plug that all into that down there, and it gets really big and ugly. So I'm just going to draw myself a little separate uh, space here. So t is going to be equal to the square root. It'll be 2 delta x all over g sine of theta minus mu kinetic g cosine of theta. And that there is your answer. And when you plug in all the numbers that it tells you, you get the right answer, and we're done. Thank you for watching.